Good morning, my name is Amanda Scheid and this is fourth grade here at Ridge Elementary School. Today we're going to be doing a lesson on fractions and spheros. I hope you enjoy. We've been talking about fractions for a few days now and so we're going to start each morning as we always do with an alike and different. So I want you to take a few seconds um, in your brain, I want you to think about what makes these two alike and what makes them different. If you can think of something that makes them alike or different, I want you to put a finger up on your fist. If you can think of two ways, three ways, four ways, five ways, I want you to think about how many ways can you tell that they are alike and different. I'm going to call on some friends in just a few seconds, give you a second to think. Oh, I'm seeing a few people who have a few different ways. All right, raise your hand high if you have a way to tell me that these two are alike or different. Caleb? They're different because one of them is on the right and the other is on the left. So you're talking about the shaded part, so you say they're different because this one is shaded on the right while that one's shaded on the left? Good. Sammy? Um, they're alike because uh, both of them have the same amount of uh, value shaded. Good, so you're saying they're both alike because they have the same amount shaded in on each of the models. Talai? They're different because they're different colors. So you're noticing the color difference, that's something that makes them different. Eli? Um, they're different because one is different. You're talking about the parts that are shaded up in, so these are squares while this is a rectangle. Awesome. Arsalan? Um, I want to say the same thing as that, but I wouldn't. Okay, so you were thinking the same thing Eli was? I love that. Kinda? Um, they are the same because, because both of the squares are the exact same size. So you're saying that these squares are the same size? No, like the entire square. So this whole model is the same size as this whole model. So they're the same size. Yeah, you're completely right. Talai? So you're seeing the difference in how the model is broken up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. On your desk, you have an Expo marker. Go ahead and uncap that Expo marker. I want you to write down what is the fraction that this model represents and what is the fraction that this model represents. Think about which is our numerator, what part is our denominator. Take a second on your desk and write that out. So you should have two fractions right beside each other. Right beside each other. Awesome, you don't need to draw the models, just draw, write your fractions down. So think about what the different denominators are gonna look like and what the numerators, nice job. Nice job, just look at that denominator again, right? Is that 10? Columns, what is that broken up into, that second model? How many pieces are there? Awesome. Awesome. Look carefully at that second model. Think about our base 10 blocks and how many pieces that second model is broken up into. Good, nice change. Good. Nice, good job. So look at that second model, how much is it broken up into? Awesome. All right, looking at this first model, how many pieces is it broken up? What's our fraction gonna look like for that, Sierra? 10. 10, there are 10 pieces, and how many pieces are shaded in, Sierra? Two. Two, awesome. If you got the same thing as Sierra for your first fraction, go ahead and give me a same symbol. Awesome, I'm seeing a lot of same symbols. All right, what about this second model? What is our fraction going to be for the second model, George? 100. 100 is going to be our denominator because there are 100 pieces if I count each of these squares. And what would our numerator be, George? Uh, 20. 20. Good. Now, we have two different numbers as our fractions, but Sammy told me that these two models show the same fraction. So I want you to consider what symbol would go in the middle here. Would it be a greater than, a less than, an equal to, or not equal to symbol? On your desk, go ahead and fill it in if you think you know. Good. 
Good. So think about what symbol is going to go here in the middle. What symbol is going to go here in the middle? Awesome. All right. What symbol did you put here in the center of your two fractions? Henesis? An equal sign. Why did you put an equal sign in the middle, Henesis? Why did you put that equal sign? What did you notice about the fractions or the models? How much space is covered in each of them? The same amount of space or a different amount of space? The same, right? It might be, this one might have it on the left and this one might have it on the right, but the same amount of space is shaded in. So we would put our equal sign. Who can tell me, what are these two fractions called? We have a special word when we think about fractions. Kenda? Yeah, equivalent fractions. Can you see equ say equivalent fractions? Good, that means fractions that are equal to one another. We talked about, they might not look the same, but they mean the same thing. Awesome, go ahead, just use your hand. We're gonna erase our desk for now. All right. So today what we're gonna be focusing on, oh, I'm gonna give you a second to just, doesn't have to be perfect. Awesome, all right, turn your focus right back up here. Awesome, I see a lot of eyes. I'm waiting on a few more sets of eyes. Awesome. So today we're going to be learning how to communicate and collaborate our thinking about fractions. We're going to be doing some stations with our um, Ozbot robots um, and we're going to use those robots to code them to different um, answers we have to our different fraction problems. Um, we will know we've learned it when we can explain our thinking to our group. So today is not just about answering a question, it's being able to say why and how you got that answer. Does that make sense? Awesome, I see a lot of heads nodding. So we're going to be doing four different stations to kind of help our understanding with fractions. The first station is going to be bowling. All right, you guys are going to be using our Ozbot to bowl and hit into the pins. And in our packet, we're going to record how many pins you are able to knock down with your Ozbot. You're going to shade in the fraction. You're going to shade in the fraction um, of how many pins you knock down, and then you will write the fraction right here. On the other side, you're going to go ahead and write how many pins did you not knock down, so the opposite. How many pins are left standing, and then you'll write your fraction on the other side. If you feel like that makes sense, give me a thumbs up. Awesome. Station number two will be the fraction number line. So you're gonna use division statements here in your packet and you're gonna match them to a fraction on your number line. We talked about how division and fraction are linked. They are a mirror of one another. And so we will be using the different frac uh, division statements and matching them with a fraction. So once you figure out the division, the fraction, you're gonna write it over here and you will code your Ozbot to move to that fraction. Make sense? If that makes sense, give yourself bunny ears. Awesome. Lots of friends paying attention. All right, station number three, our favorite, reviewing multiplication. You will have a ring that has multiplication facts on it. Your job is to figure out the product of that multiplication card, and you're going to code your Ozbot to land on that number of the product. We feel good about that one? Give me a head nod if we've got it. Awesome. And... Our fourth and final station, we'll use the packet one more time. And we're going to be looking um, on our big piece of paper. We have fractions on one side and fra uh, models, fraction models on the other. Your job is to match the equivalent fractions on one side to the equivalent fraction on the other. Once you find a match, you're going to write it down here um, on the equals um, division uh, fraction statement. Does anybody have any questions about this station? Do we feel like we understand all four stations? At each station, you'll have a bin that has um, this instruction card in it, so if you forget what you're doing, you can refer back to that. All right, when I call your group, 
You're gonna come on up to me, get your supplies, and then one person I'm gonna send over to get your Ozbot and your iPad. Does that make sense to everybody? Go ahead while I'm calling people, pull out your paper, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right. Uh, multiplication, Henesis, Eli, and Arsalan, come on down. All right, why don't you guys go in the back corner by the library with this guy, and I'm gonna give you this. Awesome job. All right, um, bowling. Deoscar, Caleb, Sammy. All right, why don't you guys go right here in the middle between those two table groups. All right, make sure it's aimed towards you. Awesome. There you go, and now you're ready to go. All right, so how many pins did you knock down? Four. Four pins, so what are we gonna color in on our fraction model? Four. Good, we're gonna color in four, so what's our fraction gonna be for how many you knock down? Four tenths, four out of 10. This page, my friend, there you go. So we're filling in here, how many you knock down? We're gonna color in the amount you knock down, good. One, two, three, four. Four. Good, four is gonna be our numerator and 10 is gonna be our denominator. Awesome, so how many pins were left standing? You need to make sure you count that. That's it. Good. Did you find it, Sammy? Awesome, here it is. Let's flip it right over. It's gonna be six. One, two, three, six. Oh, no, they're more tens. Yep, so six tenths, awesome. All right, check in with your group. Did everybody get the same thing written down? All right, who's next? Nice job, guys. Um, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Okay. Awesome. All right. Yes. Can we put this, this, and A? Yep, so you're going to write down the fraction. So what does this fraction model represent? One half. One half. So on your paper, you're going to write one half. And then what fraction did you guys find that was equivalent to one half? <coughs> two fourths. So you're going to write down two fourths. So you guys move the sphero from one half to two fourths. All right. We feeling good so far? All right. Go ahead. Next person is ready to go. Awesome job. Make sure it's aimed. Yeah, you might have to take off your gloves. Make sure it's aimed towards you before you move it. All right. Keep going, guys. Awesome work. All right, how are we doing back here? Good, so which one are we working on now? Good, so what fraction do those cookies represent? Eight tenths. Eight tenths. Good, three fourths, how did you know? Good, three cookies split into fourths, awesome. They, oh, yep, yeah, definitely need to aim. Now you're ready to drive. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Does everybody have that one written down on their paper? All right, so let's look at the next one. It says three Hershey bars shared between eight friends. Three eights, I think. Three eights. How do you know? Because there's three Hershey bars and then shared between eight friends. Good. So our fraction is going to be three eights. It's over here. Awesome. Did you have did you aim it to yourself? Oh. There we go. Awesome. We doing okay? Oh. Uh oh, what happened? Let's re. There we go. Sometimes they just come unconnected. Not a big deal. All right, and then drive down at the bottom. You got nine out of ten. You got nine out of ten. Nice. So how many were left standing? One. One. All right, Deoscar. <laughs> Full speed. Oh, right down the middle. Right down the center. That's five. Five tenths. Good. So five tenths were knocked over. 
Three times four. What is three times four? Oh, five times four. Nice job. Awesome work. All right, five times two. And then the question is. Oh, I'm trying to see the question. Two times twelve. Twelve divided by one. Which is literally one. Okay, okay. Two times twelve. How's it going? Did we find some more equivalent fractions? Yes, one twice. I can't get to the board. Wait, so that's a lot. George, have you gone? I can't get to the board. Well, I think it's your turn, my friend, if you're ready. So the question is, one ruler uh, section into 12 equal parts. You'll let me lay off. You guys all ready? Oh. Well, my turn wasn't down. Come on, Sammy. Pretty impressive. Yes. Six. Yellow one. Six times. You've done all of them in the different rings? No, down on five. You've done all of them in the different rings? All right. So this time, go ahead, go back through. And maybe see, so like, our salon got all the fives. So maybe let Hennis just have a turn to do the fives. Does that make sense? All right. I'll give you those then. And I even got all of them. High five. Nice work. Next All right, how are we doing over here, guys? Next page. next page, awesome work. All right, what's the first one we're going to be driving to on the next page? 10, 2. So 10 divided by, so, so remember, when we have a fraction house, Right, we're going to look at the number inside, and that is our number that's going to be our numerator. And then the number outside is what it's being divided by. So 2 is being divided by 10. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. So what would the fraction be? 2, uh, is it, um, two divided by 10. Mm -hmm. So how would we write that as a fraction? Perfect. So do you see it on the number line over there? 2 tenths. Perfect. Awesome. Um, three divided by four. All right. So, three fours. Time to clean it up. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and watching our lesson today on fractions and spheros. Go Rotor!